Okay, so now let's imagine you've done your setup, you've removed distractions, you've got rid of screens that might be flickering in your peripheral vision, uh, you've made a pact with yourself to spend two to three hours, but broken up into 20 to 25 minutes lots with small rewards and perhaps a bigger reward at the end of the full study session and you've asked yourself what do you want to achieve in your study session and you're thinking about what you can do and you've decided you're going to focus on that. There are some key things. One of the things you will often have to do is do some reading either as a new chapter in a book or a, an article or you may want to do a review reading particularly for a first time. Let's have a look at what's happening here. Let's suppose we're going to look at this chapter on introduction to WANs. One of the worst things that we can do, particularly if it's a new and a demanding subject, is just start reading. So we start reading in here, and this is a bit like if we said to you, wherever you are now, I'm going to name a suburb that you've got no idea where it is in Sydney, or wherever you may be, and I'm going to ask you to find your way there without any idea other than just the bit of street or road in front of you. So what are the, some of the first questions that come up? You start asking yourself, well, what's going on here? Where am I? What's the overall direction I'm heading? And these are things that become internal distractions and actually prevent you from focusing on the work. So if we're faced with a new chapter like this, some key things that are really important to do first is give your brain some overview of where you're going. It wants to have some context and some idea of what the target is. So let's suppose you said to yourself, what I am looking forward to achieving by the end of this study period, two hours, is to have at least covered and understood the main concepts in this chapter. First of all, let your brain know what's in the chapter. Notice that there are some objectives. You might just look at those Briefly, notice that there are key terms you can come back to with page references. A good thing to do is even go right to the end of the book and even notice that there are challenge questions. You might even like to look at some of the questions. At this stage, none of them might mean anything to you at all, but it's starting to give your brain questions that it knows should be answered within the chapter and there can be little flags set inside for when it does see the answer to these questions it's much more likely that that text will be meaningful to you. Come back to the beginning of the chapter and skim through it. Notice the headings. Notice things that are in bold print or in a different colour to highlight. Notice there are questions like what is a WAM? Have a look at diagrams. No need to stop and look at them much at this stage. Just notice that it's something about a WAN location, what figure it is, where it is. Notice there are more points here, why a WAN's necessary. So you're getting an overview of what's in the chapter and how it progresses. The evolving enterprises, something about businesses, small office, single lands, campus, multiple lands, and branch WANs. So you already know there's something about small networks building up into bigger networks. Distributed, global, we go on, we keep noticing the diagrams and the hierarchical design model. No, and at this stage, absolutely no need to be trying to understand it, just allowing yourself to recognize any terms that you're familiar with. N noticing that there are pictures without taking time to uh, pay attention to them at this stage, and just getting an overview of the chapter and what's in there. It may take no more time than we're actually taking in the course of this video, where you just go through and notice things. If maintaining attention is a challenge at times, then actually use your hand and follow that. This is something that's sometimes used in some forms of speed reading, but we're not speed reading, we're just skimming, and you might be just using your hand to keep your attention and stop at moments where you might notice something that may seem more familiar or more interesting and you continue going through the whole chapter in that vein so that your brain has an overview of, of what's in the whole thing until you get all the way to the end. And there we are with the summary and what to do in labs, questions to check your understanding.
At this stage you may go, okay, well, I'm going to see by the end of this if I, which of these questions I can answer. Then you come back to the beginning and you may look more specifically at the objectives and then start working with the material, reading through, but maybe say, okay, I'm going to go through this main section here under introducing wide area networks. Once again, scan what that section does until you get to the next main section. So we find out what they are and why, why they are necessary. And then we can come back and start making notes. Now, if it's your own book, you may choose to highlight some sections, but as you'll find in other things like the Learning How to Learn course in Coursera, that just doing lots of highlighting isn't very useful, but you may want to highlight no more than a single sentence at a time. Better still, if it's your own book or your own printed paper, make notes. If not, start making notes beside on a piece of paper. Now, in a moment, let's talk about notes. So one of the most important aspects of notes is actually that you do need to make notes and you need to make, make handwritten notes. A whole lot of things happen when you're making notes and some of us go, oh, I'd rather type, I'd rather do, you may have some typed up notes, but there's one of the key aspects of making handwritten notes is first of all, it keeps you active. One of our big jobs in this is making sure that we are able to maintain focus. And being able to use your handwritten notes for that will help a great deal. The other thing is to make handwritten notes, you're not going to copy the book out, you want to summarise. And to do that, you actually have to think. There has to be cognitive work going on. in which you are making sense of what you're reading, working out what you don't yet understand, what you do understand, so that you can actually make an effective summary. One of the key things about summaries is that you will be able to use them then in spaced reviews, frequently for the first few days after you learn something new, and then spaced out over time as you prepare for exams or assessments. But in the first, first instance, we want notes that because they're keeping you active and they are requiring you to do cognitive work so that you can make effective summaries. Now, the other thing with notes is that you do want them to be neat. However, I hear you saying, but my handwriting's a mess. Well, yes, you can make messy hand notes in the first instance, but we'd, I'd thoroughly recommend that after you've made notes that help you think, that help you understand things and help you maintain focus, you then turn around and in some form or other make do them as neat notes. You may do that as part of your review session a day or two later, for example. So you're not only making your notes tidier, but you're making them or you're doing the making of them as a part of your review process. Another question is, can I use a different, can I use cursive writing, for example? So is it okay to use this style of writing? Well, yes, again, the answer becomes, can you finally do a form of it that is clear and easy for you to read? However, we would make one thing that you uh, highlight a point that you not everything should look the same. Let's have a look. So one of the key things with these notes is that, as we've already said, the act of doing them is helping you focus, helping you maintain focus and helping you think in a way that's helping you summarise and to do that you have to be clear about what you do understand and what you still need to sort out. The other thing then is the actual form of the notes. Let's suppose you had a whole page of notes 
and everything was in, let's suppose you've, this is your second lot of notes and you've got a whole page of nice, neat writing. And you do it all in a blue or a black pen and after a while, even though this is only scribble, you can imagine this is nice, neat writing. You go, you look at a page like this and you go, okay, what is your brain going to remember from looking at that page? Probably very little other than there's a whole lot of writing there. So think ahead to, particularly if you've got exams, where are you going to be able to... Um, when you're in an exam, you actually want to have images that come back to you that have things highlighted. So it might be images or it might be words you hear in your mind, but you need to code information into your brain that makes it easy to retrieve. There's nothing, nothing here that's easy to retrieve. But let's take a really simple example of a formula that you'd be familiar with from school of speed equals distance over time. You might have your definition there in written out in English. But the bit that's you know, going to be really important for you in exam is probably the formula, so make it stand out on the page. Be prepared to use space, for example. Highlight it if necessary, then follow on with some example problems. So you might have your examples and then you can go into doing your exercises. But one of the key things with this is later on when you imagine looking at this page, can you easily see the formula and can you easily recite to yourself what this formula is and, and what it, each of the terms in it means. Once you can do that and can put it and use it in an exercise clearly, you know that you're on the path to learning. One of your first steps, though, is just making sure that your notes support you in understanding what you're learning and they're written in such a way that your brain has some image and maybe even the sound of your own voice and the way you recite that to yourself that comes back easily and makes it much easier to remember. Just reading and rereading won't do this for you. Just doing lots of highlighting will not do this for you. You must Use your own hands, be active, that'll help you maintain focus, and as you're summarising, you're having to do the work. Certainly do some untidy notes first if you need to, but your final versions should be come up with neat ones. And then, something for another video is how do I review and when, how often should I review? If you have neat notes, it's very easy to quickly scan some notes like this where the important bits stand out and that should remind you of what these things mean and should make it much easier to apply in exercises.